Hello everyone. This video will give you an explanation of Unit 8's homework. You might recall that Unit 8 requires, or the homework problem says that Barry and Steve are good friends. Barry wants to buy a new computer, but he doesn't have the money for it right now. Barry says he will pay Steve $2,000 in five years if Steve gives him the $1,600 for the computer today. Steve figures that there's an interest rate of 6% if he were to put the money in the bank instead of lending it to Barry. Assuming that there is no risk of Barry not paying the $2,000 when he says he will, should Steve go through with the loan or should he put his money in the bank? Explain your answer. Well, what we're really talking about is a computation of how much money Barry will have in the bank at the end of the five years. Um, I'm sorry, that Steve will have in the bank at the end of five years if uh, he puts the money in the bank. So that's the key to this problem. We're dealing with a principal of $1,600, which is how much will be deposited in the bank, an interest rate of 6%, or an R, and a time period of five years. Now, speaking, uh, thinking for a minute about what compound interest is, compound interest is where the bank not only pays you interest on the principal, but also pays you interest the next period on the interest that it paid you in the previous period. We'll look at an example. Let's assume for a minute that we're going to deposit. Well, first off, let me back up and tell you that uh, remember that to express a percentage or to be able to make it use it in a calculation, you have to express it as a decimal. To do that, we divide the percent by 100, and dividing 100 into 5%, we get a decimal of 0 0.05. So if we deposit that $100 in the bank at 5% interest, we're going to multiply the $100 by 0 0.05, and that will give us $5 interest earned during the first year. So at the end of the first year, we don't have 100 anymore. We now have $105. Again, during the second year, we're going to earn 5% on that $105. So multiplying the 105 by 0 0.05, we get an interest of $5.25 this time. And adding it to our original, to the $105 we had at the beginning of year two, we now have a total of $110.25. In the at the beginning of year three, uh, now at the end of year three, we're going to accumulate another five percent interest. This time on the hundred and ten dollars and twenty-five cents. So multiplying it by 0 0.05, we find that our interest at the end of the third year is five dollars and fifty-one cents. If we add it to the hundred and ten twenty-five, we find that at the end of three years we have hundred and fifteen dollars and seventy-six cents. Now this can become a quite laborious computation if you have a large amount of money that's put in a bank and you're doing it for an extended period of time. So to simplify that process, a formula was developed. That formula is called future value and all future value means is that we're looking at how much money will we have at some future time if we deposit a given amount of money at a given interest rate for a certain number of periods or years. Okay, The formula is future value FV equals P uh, times the quantity 1 plus R raised to the T power. Uh, the principal P is $100. The interest rate R is 5%. And the T or number of time periods will be three years in this case. So the formula again plug in the values this time. So we for the P we put in the $100. We're going to multiply it by the quantity 1 and plus and then we're going to bring in the R which is the interest rate and remember we're expressing it as a decimal so it's 0 0.05 and then we're going to raise that quantity 1 plus 0 0.05 to the third power. The next step is to go inside the parentheses and make that computation whatever it is. In this case it's add 1 and 0 0.05 when we do that, we get the answer 1.05. Now we need to raise it to the third power. Don't panic. This is not that complicated. Let's talk for a minute about raising numbers to a power.
Uh, it, all raising numbers to a power means is multiplying a number by itself a certain number of times. We'll use a simple example. We're going to raise 3 to the fifth power. The first power of 3 is 3. The second power, or squaring the number, is multiplying 3 times itself, 3, and we get an answer of 9, which I'm sure you know. If we raise 3 to the third power, or cube it, we take that 9 and bring it down and multiply it by 3 again, and we get 27. To raise 3 to the fourth power, we bring the 27 down, multiply it by 3 again, and we get 81. To raise 3 to the fifth power, we bring the 81 down, multiply it by 3 again, and we get an answer of 243, which is 3 raised to the fifth power. Now that's the simple example. What about the 1.05 that we were dealing with a minute ago? To raise the number 1.05 to the third power, first we're going the first power will be 1.05, the number itself. Squaring it, we're going to multiply 1.05 times itself, and we're going to get an answer, if you used a calculator, of 1.1025. Now, to raise it to the third power, we're going to bring that 1.1025 down, multiply it by 1.05 again, and we get a final answer of 1.157625, which is the, the amount when we cube or raise 1.05 to the third power. Substituting that answer back into our equation, we now have 1.17625, and we're going to multiply it by 100 and when we do we get our previous answer of $115.76 which is exactly how we computed the uh, uh, quantity when we did it longhand. Now when you go to do this homework remember at the top of the page put your name, the course number, and section number, the unit number, and repeat the question as we always do on our pages. Okay. Then show your calculations. That's the whole objective of this, pro of this uh, problem. Answer the main question. How much money would Steve have uh, in the bank if he put his $1,600 in the bank for the three years at the 6% interest? Is it more or less than what Barry would pay him back? And knowing that answer, what do you think Steve should do? And at the very bottom, remember to show your references. For sure, the e-guide for the Unit 8, perhaps this video, and perhaps the seminar for Unit 8. Thank you very much. I hope that's a help in getting your homework done this week. If you have any questions, you know how to contact me. You can reach me by email, in the instructor's office, or by uh, instant messaging. Thank you very much.